Michael from CTW here, and today we wanted to talk about the PUBP plot. We get a lot of calls over the years, and even now, of people wanting to know more about the PUBP. What does it mean? Where does it come from? How it's calculated? How we find the points? So we just wanted to take a moment, stop, and describe it fully. We've done it in papers and different things, but let's just do it together in a video and we can try to get to the bottom of it so everybody understands it and we get rid of the mystery, right? So PVP, peak velocity plot. So what does that mean? Where does it come from? So you have to imagine this came from industry years and years ago. This was around long before Rorg ever built the first dyno and tried to make a PVP plot. So manufacturers say like Honda, Honda cars, they need to make a new, a new, uh, a new car, a new Accord, a Civic, whatever they're making, and they need shock absorbers, so they call Showa, or KYB, or Takiko. Manufacturers actually make the shock absorbers, and they say we need four million shock absorbers, and Showa says fine. So what do they need to look like? And Honda says okay. They pick some velocities that are important. And they say at each of these velocities, the forces need to be within a range, a little plus or minus at each velocity. And they say, okay, you pick, pick some velocities. So they give them perhaps three velocities. And they say at these three velocities, the compression force needs to be plus or minus 10%. So the first velocity, maybe it's uh, you know 50 newtons, plus or minus 10%. The second velocity is 100 newtons. And then the last one, 150 newtons, plus or minus 10%. So Showa sets up their assembly line and they're going to make the, the dampers and they set up the program so that it's looking at those three points. Now the reason they do this is because if they had to look at all the data, and as everybody should be aware of, a, a full CVP, right? So if you do a full CVP, say to 10 inches per second, you're going to get some graph that looks like this. All right, all of that data would be very hard to collect, to process, and then put a uh, plus or minus 10% validation on four million dampers. So you can imagine three speeds, compression, rebound, three dampers, or three speeds, all of these data points over four million shocks, the computing power needed would be tremendous so it was pretty quick to get to the point well if you want to pay as we all know you want to pay pennies on the, the dollar for your four million shock absorbers you better figure out a better way that better way was to just come up with points so your three speeds the Honda would tell Showa at each of these speeds, we're going to give a little window. As long as the force at that speed is in there, then that damper is good. It gets a green light, it goes to the right. If it's outside, that damper is bad, it gets a red light, it goes the other way, and they may have to refix it. Maybe they just retest it, something like that. But the PVP originally came about because of data processing. There's no way to order 4 million shocks, build 4 million shocks, and you are talking about cycle times of 8 seconds or less in, in cases where you're running the shock 2 3 speeds and within 8 seconds has to be in, run, and take it off. And uh, the, uh, the operator needs to be looking at a light or a screen and say, green it's good, red it's bad. You cannot possibly hope to, especially 30 years ago, 20 years ago even, uh, process all that data. But you could look at one point from each velocity, compression and extension, and go, okay, that's within range or it's out of range. So that's where the PVP came from. And you can see peak velocity plot. So we'll kind of go a little bit more into depth as we just kind of covered up why the PVP exists, where it came from. It came from necessity, essentially. So back to what is a PVP. We're all familiar with running individual speeds, 10 inches per second, 250 millimeters per second, where 
we see the entire graph, the compression open, the compression closed, the rebound open, the rebound closed, all of those data points. Well, a PVP is much simpler. PVP is just looking for the force at peak velocity. So if you run three speeds and we'll say, and we'll do this in uh, metric for, uh, for the down under crowd, you know, 50, 200 and 500, millimeters per second and you run your speeds and the first graph is like that and then the second graph gets a little more hysteresis and, and then the final speed you have and so you run your three speeds and at each speed the software goes out and looks for the force the force at peak velocity so on the first one there's the force. The second one, and I, I went over it, but you can you help me out here. And the last one, there's the point. Same thing, you get your point, you get your point, you get your point. So in the end, all you have on the screen, in theory, are three points. So those are the forces at each velocity that you ran. So what does a PVP do? PVP just draws a straight line from point to point to point. Point to point to point. So that's what a PVP is, peak velocity plot. Nice and simple. It is a, an easier line, obviously, to sell out, send out to your customer. It uh, has less questions involved, but that's what a PVP does. Now we have several ways to create a PVP. The initial way when the start was go to peak velocity and grab the force. But if you've looked in the uh, Rorschach 6 and you look in CTW Probe, there are uh, other things you can do. So you can grab the force at peak velocity, or you can grab uh, peak force, which may not be at peak velocity, especially if you have uh, of some kind of large uh, airbag inside, a, uh, a rubber uh, or a gas chamber, you actually might come up and as uh, it might keep building. So if you have your, your line, peak force does not happen at peak velocity because it's still making force inside the dipper. Bicycle shocks are notorious for this. Um, so that graph looks very bizarre and we take calls on that all the time. The guy says, you know, I just can't understand what my PVP is. I ran to uh, 500 millimeters per second, but that's not where the point is. Well, because they've chosen to use peak force instead of peak velocity. So you have to be careful about that. And we'll look at that on a graph later on, an actual software graph. But you have peak velocity, grab the point. You have peak force, grab the point. And then you have a window centered around zero displacement. So we'll look at the force first displacement graph and uh, try to talk about that. So say you're on a uh, 50 millimeter stroke, two inches. And you, you've all seen the force first displacement the football graph, the Coney football graph, world famous. God bless Coney for coming up with that. So you've run your three speeds and you're making more and more force each time. This is displacement or stroke. This is force compression, extension can be the other way. It just all depends on how you set that up. But those are your three speeds when you look at force versus displacement. Now, zero displacement is this line. So this would be uh, minus 25, and this would be plus 25, or plus 1.00, whatever half of your stroke was. This point here and here, that's what that is. So zero displacement is right in the middle, mid stroke. If you're looking at a crank dyno, circles going around, Mid stroke is zero displacement. You have your positive and your negative from zero. Same thing. So this is your zero displacement. So here, 
If you just use the first tool, zero displacement, it's just gonna go as close to zero as it can and get the point. That's what this looks like in a force force displacement graph. Now, if you use the window around zero displacements, which we always talk about is probably the best way to get a, the most consistent reading, a small window. If you type in 0.1 uh, inches uh, for the window, or you're doing in millimeters, what it means is it's gonna do that window around zero. It's gonna take all the data that may be in here, averages them all together, and that's the point it uses. That's what that window means. All the data that's in there, it takes the average. That's the point it's going to plot over on the force versus velocity. So four ways you can do a PVP. So the first way is peak velocity. The second way is peak force. This can be tricky because if your peak, if it doesn't make peak force and peak velocity like a perfect shock because of, okay, because maybe it's not a perfect shock where you have something in there that prevents that from happening, that can make the graph look uh, quite a bit different. And then you have at zero displacement, just zero displacement doesn't try to do an averaging window. And then you have zero displacement with a window. And that's what we see there. That's what we, we typically recommend to people to begin with so that they get the most consistent results. That is what every manufacturer I've ever seen has used just because they're trying to be consistent and uh, once more, they're trying to make it easy to pass shocks because these things are going through the assembly lines, through feeder stations so quickly that uh, time is of the essence if they're doing a shock every eight seconds, that's a good thing. If it's a shock every 20 seconds, obviously they've just cut production way beyond 100% and somebody on the line is starting to scream and want to know why it's taking so long. So this is peak velocity. This is to be understood. Now, some other things that we always get into with peak velocity is you don't know anything about how it got from here to there unless you look at the individual speeds, right? So maybe you had a, a regressive curve and at velocity it did that. You have no idea what it did to get to this point. All you know is this point. Maybe it was a digressive shock to make that point. So you have to be very, very careful when looking at a PVP to understand that it is, it is data, but it's not uh, all the data. Now again, if you're running four million shocks, these three speeds, that's as good as it gets. That is, that is plenty for a manufacturer. If you're a racing team, if you're doing motorcycles, you better understand and better have an idea of if that point is different by any amount, you need to look at the individual speeds. And you, we all remember our PVP trees, if you expand them, you can look at each individual speed. Well, that's what this is, the individual speed that makes up the PVP. That is very important. We see this all the time, like two PVPs match, but one shock's a digressive, the other shock's a linear, and they feel very different on a car. Well, this is why, because a PVP, in essence, kind of hides that data from you. You have to be aware, you have to go back and look at the individual speeds, you really want to understand what the damper is doing and not just looking at the PVP itself. Now, other ways you can use a PVP because again, it does make things easier to look at for sure. So you can imagine you have uh, a, a we'll, we'll, we'll say you have a, a linear digressive, right? And try to explain and show you how this all works out. So you have a, a, a linear digressive, so you know compression somewhat linear, and your your extension is going to be digressive. If you ran one speed PVP, right? 
you ran one speed out to uh, half a meter per second, 500, you got this point, the PVP line is gonna look just like that. And you're like, you have no idea whatsoever that it's an actual digressive piston. What if you run two speeds? So say you run this 500 and say you run a 200, right? So all of a sudden, a two speed, a two point PVP, two speeds, we're starting to get a little bit more of what this shock's really doing, all right? So we went from that line to this. We are like, oh, something's happening, I don't know. Okay, so what if we then, instead of running two speeds, what if we were to run five speeds, all right? So we run, say we run a speed to there, speed to there, speed to there, and then we have these. Now, our PVP is starting to explain more that the damper's digressive. It's all about continuing to run X number of points to best map out the damper. So the more points you run, the more you will know about the damper. It's nice. PVPs, again, like I say, they're easy, they're easy to look at. And if you run a 20 point PVP, you have more than likely, in this case, more than likely, if you run enough points, you are going to define that shock well enough that you're gonna understand what you need to know quickly, right? And that's the, and some of that's the goal. What you need to know quickly. You could tell any PVP that looks like that, that's a digressive curve. So the more points you run, the more you can see what the PVP is. And when you get to the track or somebody's having a, a discussion on what to change, you can always go back and look at the individual speeds to see how it got there. You know, I, I close the adjuster up three and you'll be able to look at the individual speeds to see what it actually did to the bleed where the PVP is not gonna show that as quickly or as, as well defined, but you can see running more points to find your PVP much, much better. Now, if you have a linear shock, once it hits that shim stack, once it hits that piston, it doesn't really matter how many points you run, it's just a slope. It is the slope of the, uh, the shims on the piston at that point. The only thing you'd ever run into is if it cavitates because you eventually go so fast, or a twin tube shock where it's just not able to pull enough fluid to the other side, things like that. But on a linear shock, you hit that PVP, you can do two speeds if at all possible. Um, so that's what doing more points for a PVP gives you, gives you a better definition of what it is. But the key is understanding that a PVP can hide things. You need to know how to get to them so that you can see it. And the more points you do, the more the PVP becomes like as if you had run a CVP, right? So if you run a CVP, these all start to line up and then it hits that digressive it would define it in the same way. So that's our PVP, trying to talk about it just on a simple board. Uh, next, we're gonna go to actual software and show you what it looks like in software to give you uh, a further idea, but I think you can see, I think you can understand what we're doing with a PVP, where it comes from, the history behind it, and, uh, and why it came about in the first place. And that was because manufacturers needed an easy and quick way to do four million shocks. Hopefully none of, none of you are trying to do four million shocks in any short amount of time. There you go. See you next.